It seems like there's some arguments that are always meant to rage on. LeBron or Jordan, does pineapple belong on pizza, and what's better for a home gym setup, a garage or a basement? Today we're going to get to the bottom of that. So I want to break down some of the pros and cons, and I'm going to rank this on five different categories, and each category will be worth a single point, and we'll see who comes out on top. They each possess their own strengths and their own flaws. The biggest factor is going to be what you have access to. Now I have this space here in my garage. I've had it for about a year since I bought this house, and I'll link a video at the end on how I built this home gym space. The first category is gonna be accessibility. Getting equipment in and out of a garage is going to be so much easier than a basement. I can wheel my spin bike out into the driveway if I need more space or if I'm doing a deep clean or if I'm just bringing in brand new equipment. When I set up this gym space, it was so much easier walking through that front garage door instead of having to carry everything through the house, around the corners and down the stairs, and if you're someone who does private training, it's a little bit easier to not have clients walking through your house. So I think this category, we're going to give the point to the garage gym. Category number two is going to be temperature control. Now, most basements will stay at a rather consistent temperature throughout the year. So this limits the unpredictability weather can throw at you. Now, if you have an attached garage or an already temperature controlled garage, then you probably have a lot less to worry about. But someone like myself who has a detached garage and it's not currently insulated, the weather can be a big problem. A day like today where it's 81 degrees out, you can also see that it's 81 degrees in my gym space here. Now an air condition can help out with that, but for those of you who've seen my gym build video, I'm in Buffalo, New York. It gets really cold here in the winter and it's very snowy, so it's a little bit of an issue when it gets cold out. A space heater can make it comfortable if it's in the upper 40s or even the 50s, I can make this space pretty comfortable with a space heater. Anything below that in the teens, in the 20s, in the 30s, I have to do my workout at the gym that I work at instead of coming to my home space. So I plan to insulate at least the ceiling so that I can use this a little bit more throughout the winter. But if you are in a basement, you're already mostly underground. You're well regulated with your temperature. And if you also think about the fact that if you're going to be running AC and you're going to be running a space heater at the two most extreme ends of the year, you're going to be increasing how much that actually costs. And I think it's pretty obvious the point here has to go to the basement gym. The next category is the ability to perform movements. I thought about this and I didn't know the right way to say it, but we need to make sure we have a large array of exercises we can choose from and we might be a little bit limited in a basement. Now you can see me here doing a shoulder press and I'm five foot eight. When I fully extend my arms with a standard plate, we're looking at almost eight feet in my garage. And after I did some Googling, a standard US basement is somewhere between six and a half seven or seven and a half foot tall ceilings. So this is gonna limit the number of exercises you can select. You won't be able to do things like standing overhead press, clean and jerk, snatch, even something as simple as a step up on a box might limit you depending on how high the box is and how low your ceiling is. The basement gym that I had growing up only had six and a half foot ceilings, so any type of overhead pressing had to be done seated. Yeah, you can probably find ways to get around this and still get a great workout, but it is something to be conscious of and make sure your basement ceiling isn't too low before you smash your knuckles on the ceiling. Point going to the garage gym here. The next category is gonna be privacy. Now for anyone that has a garage gym, it's really nice to have your front door wide open. Well, I live in a neighborhood and if I do my lunges up and down the driveway or if you know people even walk by, you can see me in here benching, doing pull-ups, whatever it is that I'm doing. So there's a little less privacy outside. You also have the fact that if I'm maybe slamming some weights, maybe getting loud and grunting, that's something that can be heard by your neighbors along with your music it's a little bit less private in your garage space versus being downstairs since you're already partially underground. If you slam your weights, no one's really gonna hear that. No one's gonna hear your music quite as much. You're grunting. I know I brought up before that you might not want friends running through your house if you do personal training out of there, but these aren't random strangers. These are people you already know. So I don't think that's a real knock against the basement gym. So I do think the privacy point is going to go to the basement gym. And we're all tied up heading into the last category. We're gonna look at lighting and ventilation. 
And these aren't real deal breakers to me. I included them because people talk about them so much. It's really nice having your garage door open to maximize airflow and maximize lighting, especially since I shoot these videos and natural lighting is usually pretty good. But you can always improve on lighting, but natural lighting can be a little bit more challenging to replicate. I have a few soft boxes I use when filming, but not many basements have natural windows. I do have two windows in here. They're not great looking windows, but they do work and I can get airflow along with my garage door. So I think when it comes to ventilation and lighting, you have to award that point to the garage gym, giving the garage gym three out of five points and making them the clear cut winner. But I know this is subjective and there's probably some mixed opinions on this. But before you run off, I want to add a bit more context to this. And I think this hypothetical maybe might open your mind to the garage gym space a little bit more. So let's say you had unlimited funds to build your dream gym space. Would you want to go basement or garage? I think the garage gym idea makes a lot more sense because you'll be able to build a bigger space with higher ceilings and it gives a much bigger, airy, open feel. And in a dream setup, you could have a massive garage door that has turf that goes all the way outside. And I think just there's a lot more options when you start thinking about a garage space or, I mean, at this point, we're talking about just building a small gym, but I don't think a basement style setup really allows for all the options that a garage gym could give you but that's my thoughts. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. If you did enjoy this, consider hitting that like button. It helps this video get pushed out to more people. If you guys wanna see how I built my garage gym space, that video is up here. YouTube thinks this video down here is best for you. So click one of those and all the buttons, click the buttons and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.